everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to another edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live, presented by CRC Industries. I'm JG Pastor Jack. Thank you for joining us on another Wednesday night. I see we got a fantastic crowd coming in here already. Uh, our friend Dinesh is joining us from under his car. I, uh, Dinesh says, hey everyone from under my car, I hope you're sending good tidings and glad wishes and that's not a cry for help and maybe the last thing you'll ever say. So I hope you're having a good time under there and you're not trapped. If you are, just type like one over and over and we'll send somebody to get you because that's the kind of audience we have. Folks, uh, behind me is the Leroy Grid 325 trailer. We are gonna be showing you this baby tonight in depth. I am very excited to bring this to you. This is right in the wheelhouse of things I love, uh, both uh, mechanically and physically, and just things I love about our community and about our sport. So I'm really, really excited to, uh, to share this with you. Before we get into that, a couple requests. First off, if you can be so kind as to uh, do like I did, pull out your phone, um, go to your computer, Send us, uh, send us some love in the form of a like, or uh, even better, in the form of a share while you're watching us on Facebook, or if you're watching us on YouTube tonight, welcome aboard uh, YouTube fans, and um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really, really appreciate that. And if you have a question at any time tonight, throw it in the chat on Facebook, throw it in the chat on YouTube. We will see it, we will do our best to answer it, and we will proceed from there. Also, check out the folks that make this show possible, namely, our friends at CRC Industries. You can check them out at crcindustries.com. We got our big wall of CRC stuff over there. Uh, we actually use some of it in the construction of this trailer. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. And our friends at Autobooks, Aerobooks out there in Burbank, California, and on your computer, on the internet, the world's best bookstore for automotive, aircraft, boat, motorcycle, train, uh, dirigible, anything that moves or flies or sails. They have books on it, they have DVDs on it. Check them out at autobooks-aerobooks.com. So, uh, okay, good, yeah, Dinesh says he is wrapping up a coilover install. So, yes, we're very glad you are not trapped under your car, Dinesh. All right, so let us, uh, let us go to the phone here and talk to Jonathan Staggs, who is one of the uh, principals. Get him going here, look at that. Jonathan, how are you, man? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. Hey, uh, thanks for, for coming on the show. Um, we, we, we really appreciate it. So you are one of the, um, one of the principals of Leroy Engineering uh, there in Ohio. And you guys have, um, have I, in my mind, perfected the concept of the autocross trailer or the track day trailer or the, the tire utility trailer. So for, for, for folks that are out there that are autocrossers or, or track people, we all know that we've got to transport stuff to these events. We've got to get tires to these events because we're running on sticky tires. We're on slicks. We're on our compound tires. Even we're running 200 treadwear tires that we don't want to drive a thousand miles to an event across, you know, rough roads and construction sites and, you know, by our neighbor's place who's getting a new roof on, on his house. We have to get equipment. We have to get tools. We have to get pit support to these events, but we're driving our competition car. So we, we see these little trailers that normally come from, you know, discount hardware houses or farm supply stores. And you guys kind of saw that going on and, and like us realized that, that was an imperfect solution. And, um, and now we have this. So first off, tell us a little bit about, about your, your company. Who, who is Leroy Engineering? Yeah, Leader Engineering is basically my family. Um, so we're we're a family of engineers. So we're this unique combination of rednecks and geeks. And uh, yeah, we we've, we've always built stuff, and we've always wanted to build stuff well. And the autocross trailer, I don't even know where the idea came from, quite honestly. Um, but we we saw the need. We saw that the uh, the import stuff was not what everyone wanted. It was the cost everyone wanted, but it just didn't perform well. And we thought, hey, we've got the skill set to, to fix this problem. So uh, we started with the concept of making a trailer that cosmetically looked good behind, you know, an $80,000 car. Yeah. And that was our, our initial design criteria. And uh, on top of that, we decided to make one that was just bulletproof. Uh, it can't break, it's reliable, it can do the speeds that your car can do. 
and just make the whole you know autocross track day experience more pleasurable so when in the in the initial design phases and i've i've had trailers from you know uh, everybody knows where they come from i don't want to bash anybody's who's out there but i've had trailers from these places you know from sam's club and harbor freight and tractor supply and the reason i've had them from so many different places is because they're an imperfect solution to a to a known problem i think whenever you get one of those trailers you're initially having to modify it to, to, to carry tires, to carry tools, um, and then you're having to do work on, on reliability. I mean, the, the bearings they come with are never very good. The, the wheels and tires they come with are, are never very good. So when you guys started working on kind of the, the problems you wanted to solve from a, from a function or from a reliability standpoint, what, what, what were you trying to, to, to include in in these, what what were some of your big big um, big <clears throat> goals to overcome there? It started with, um, you know, we've all towed larger trailers around, taking the scrap metal to the salvage yard and whatnot, and it's just not a fun drive. So when we talk about the idea of, you know, I've got a Miata, I've got a you know a Mustang, and I want to tow a trailer, I was like, it's going to take the whole joy out of driving the thing. So we wanted to create a trailer that just rode so smooth and was so low profile that you forgot it was behind you. Um, and even on a, on a little 100 horsepower Miata, these trailers just disappear. You, have, you forget they're, they're back there until you reach your destination. So that was the idea. We wanted something that didn't clunk, didn't rattle, there was no vibrations. Um, it, it was low enough that even when you looked out your rearview mirror, it was just gone. So part of, part of getting it low was to, was to get rid of the solid axle, basically, which, which raises it up off, off the deck and yeah. put in this, this independent suspension. Um, Let's, Chris, come on over and let's let's take a look at. Well, here, let, first off, let me let me take some of the stuff off here because this this trailer actually saw its first combat with us this past weekend. We uh, drove down to Fort Myers. This got towed behind our our Project Corvette. Um, this is just as it came back su Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I haven't really done anything as far as un unpacking it. I just heard a weird noise, but I think that was. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's anything too bad. So let me take uh, let me take my bike off of here, and we'll give you a little closer look at everything. So I did give it kind of a quick nut and bolt when I got back, and um, found that you know everything not only survived but except for one thing that I found that I didn't you know fully fully tighten beforehand which was a sort of non-essential non piece you know the the the, the build and, and the actual the, the actual toughness of this thing is amazing I mean it's just it's so overbuilt so over designed and check check out this suspension over here so this is this is an upper and uh, basically a parallel a arm type um, set up with a with a coilover an adjustable coilover shock and adjustable toe and camber so i i look at that and it, it's amazing but to some extent it, it, it almost might be overkill and you know jonathan we all know that overkill is the best kind of kill but it, how how necessary is is a, a setup like this for for essentially a, a, a small utility trailer, or you know, was was there ever a point where you thought like we're designing this thing, but we're going way too far here? <clears throat> well, there's there really wasn't anything in the middle. So as soon as we reached the point where we had to remove the live axle and get rid of the leaf, spring, the next step was you know, there's nothing in between a leaf spring and a full on out you know coil over double A arm. Um, it needed to be robust, needed to be solid. You know, once we're paying for shocks, we may as well put ones on there with adjustable damping. Uh, we needed to align it, so you know, why not give it excessive amounts of tow and camber just so it, for sure you can get the, the specs you want. Um, and the cost to make that wasn't you know that much higher than going with a, a leaf spring design, and it got the center of gravity so much lower. Yeah. It, the look helped the storage, uh, helped loading and unloading the tires. You know closer to the ground so there really wasn't any cons to it well let's check out i, I want to show them one of your early early tests so this is this is some footage of of you guys testing the thing behind a uh, behind a miata 
and it's it's pretty impressive, man. Um, let me uh, let me bring this up here. So this is actually a handling test that you guys did at an autocross with with the one of your prototypes strapped behind a Miata and then just essentially went falls out with the thing and it's amazing to watch because you know, the tracking of that of that trailer behind there is is perfect. I mean the, the the car is working harder than than the than the trailer is basically. Mm -hmm. um, so w w was that? I, I, you guys are engineers. I'm, I'm sure there was there was a lot of math done ahead of time. There was a lot of um, you know modeling and, and, and theory put into it. But was that um, was that what you expected when when you went and autocross with the, with the trailer behind the Miata, or were you, were you were you pleasantly surprised, or were you um, satisfyingly validated when when that test took place? Uh, no, that's what I was expecting. On the handling front, we went out in the back roads of the country back here and tried to lose it, let's say, <laughs> and was unsuccessful. Um, so I got to the point where the car, you know, the back of the car would step out and almost drift, and the trailer remained planted right behind you. Wow. So, so yeah, and I only ran two seconds slower in the autocross with the trailer than without <laughs> it. So. Well, that you know, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that because I, we were we were talking back and forth over the weekend. And uh, I realized that I actually got better mileage in the Corvette with the trailer behind me than I did without it. And that, you know, that could be a peculiarity of a, of a Corvette coupe with a big, tall, flat rear end that produces a lot of turbulence. And then if you, mm -hmm. you, know, you put something there to break that turbulence up. But it, it at least showed, and I'm talking about the difference between like 26 and a half miles a gallon and like 28 miles a gallon. So a, a significant number. Um, you know, it at least shows that, that mileage is not suffering with this thing. And... You're right. When you when you do look out the rearview mirror, like it's you can see the fenders out the side view mirror. It's just gone. It, it there is, it it is such a um, sort of low impact um, experience on on everything that it's it's pretty amazing. So take us through a little bit, you know, kind of from from front to back, some of the some of the design el elements here. Um, Obviously, the the tongue is up a little bit to to keep keep the frame down, but as mm -hmm. as you were kind of designing this thing, what what were you, what were some of the things you you were you were I intending to get in there, and how did they how did they eventually come come to be to be here? Yeah, the overriding theme is to make the track day more enjoyable. So that largely entails making less work for yourself. Um, so we, we, we started with a bunch of research. We looked at what all, everyone else had built in their garages on any ideas that were out there. And um, we, we started with how we're going to hold the tires. And we wanted a method that was really, really fast and easy to get the tires on and off. Uh, so the strap with the E-channel uh, locks was what we landed on. Because you can you can load and unload a tire in, in a couple of seconds. So it doesn't doesn't add any stress or suffering to your day. Yeah, let me let me pull my uh, my little security feature out of here and I'll... Show everybody how these straps work. So this is this is actually pretty cool. It's it's basically just a just an e-channel mount um, stuck on 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 the front of here with individual straps for each tire, which I really really like because if a strap fails, it's just one strap failing. Um, you can see our BFG rival S's are fairly sticky. So, but but every Every tire has its own little individual safety hold down feature. You also have have, have nice little, little little cradles down here too to keep, you know, keep too much stress off of any one point on the tire. Yeah, and if you want a, a faster way to get that wheel off there, you can just loosen the strap and unhook the lower E channel and flip the whole thing up over the top, and then your lengths are always set. Oh wow! See that that's why you're an engineer and I'm I'm a journalist basically. <laughs> I, I, I'm always finding the hard, hard, hard way to do stuff. Um, okay, so let me, oh, we do have a couple of questions. Oh, Dinesh has a great question. Um, would it be possible for you guys to make a cheaper trailer without the adjustable coilovers? Funny you should ask that, Dinesh, because uh, we, we will be unveiling um, a, uh, some new products from Leroy in just a few minutes here. But yeah, th there is kind of a lineup of these things. Uh, you know, of, of, of various levels of complexity. This is c kind of the top of the line model. This one, 
<clears throat> and actually our friend Danny Kao has um, th an even bigger version than, than this one, which has a, a dual shock set up on it, which is just amazing. Um, but you guys, you know, have some stuff at the budget end too as well. So, um, Jonathan, tell, tell me about the, the, the actual construction of, of the tubes here. One, one thing, if, if you look at some of your other, other trailers in the lineup, and let me, let me show them a couple of your other, um, other trailers here. This is the, uh, this is your smallest independent suspension model, which is, uh, what's, what, what's, shoot, what's that one called again? It's, it's, it's not the, um, the, the short shift, I, I believe. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is this is your your basic model, and then the um, the paddock trailer is uh, kind of the 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 middle range. Still has independent suspension. Um, still has some of the the same features, but you know not. Especially when we're looking at like the short shift there is the design and the construction of them all seems really, really similar. Um, just, you know, from the way some of these angles are cut and, and the way some of the general architecture is, are, 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 are these models basically expansions of, of each other? Is, is there something about, I think you were telling me you guys actually invented a system to, to, to cut and measure these, these tubes on the fly, basically? Yeah, we, we invented a top secret uh, <laughs> method of creating these things. Um, basically, since these are, this is a low volume product, we're not selling thousands of these. So we had to come up with a system to cut tubing to many different lengths efficiently without having to make a hundred of the exact same part. So uh, we came up with a, a system that allowed us to make uh, any size and shape frame without having to build jigs, which is very expensive. So we can make alterations and you know longer, shorter, higher, taller, whatever you need at very low cost, so it allowed us to have a lot of different trailers in the line and be able to produce them onesies, twosies, still relatively low cost. And then if, if there's any production changes that you guys come up with in the meantime, it's gotta be really easy to implement those it's changes on, on the fly, basically, yeah. Correct, so we don't have to go back out to the shop and change a bunch of tooling. So what's the actual con construction here? It's like, it's like two inch tubing. That, two inch uh, tubing, yeah. 065 wall. Um, steel, MIG welded together, and then uh, hard powder coated. Okay, and yeah, and, and, and the powder coating is just fantastic on here. Whoever is doing, doing your powder coating is, uh, is really, really <laughs> impressive because I've, yeah. I've, I've actually, you know, I dropped stuff on it and have been moving my spare tire around and, and bolting it to the frame and I haven't managed to scratch a thing yet. So I'm really, really impressed there. All right, so let's, let's tell everybody about well, actually, let's, let's, let's tell them what, what this one costs first, because that's, that's, that's one of the, if we hear any, any criticism about these, it's the, it's the cost. And, you, you know, this one as it sits, somewhere in the, in the $2,000 range with, with most of the, most of the um, accessories installed, there's some, um, you know, some of our, our extra mounts, like for our, our spare tire, um, our, our options. But, sometimes I tell somebody that and they're like, well, that seems expensive. And then I start doing the math and looking back to the money that I've spent on, on import trailers. And by the time you actually get one on the road, you're looking at a pretty sizable chunk of that. And then by the time you get it on the road and get it reliable, you're looking at a real sizable chunk of that. Um, so, you know, I, I think by, by the time you're looking at something like this, have you guys done it, any projections like for service life of this thing? Like, like the bearings that are in this thing are just monstrous. I, they're, they're, they're completely sealed. You know, they, they, you, could, mm -hmm. you could tow an offshore powerboat with, on, on this thing and never have to worry about it. So do you, do you have any kind of projections yeah. on, on service life for some of this stuff? Yeah, the, the running gear is taken from a 2,000 pound axle. And since oh, wow. our trailers at most are half of that, you know, we're only running at 50% load in terms of the rotating components. Um, we do recommend that you take them apart and re repack the grease every 2,000 miles or so. Um, but outside of that, there's no maintenance that has to be done. So it should run for forever. Yeah, all the, all, 
all the lights are LEDs, um, and in, in fact, they were they were they're, they're so low draw that we had to add uh, a ballast to, to our, um, our 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 Corvette to actually get them get them to flash properly because they, there was just no draw on them. Um, but yeah, the, the the whole thing is just remarkably overbuilt. Let me show everybody your your your, your newest creation here, and this was kind of um, done to address the um, the folks that were concerned about about cost. Uh, this is what you guys are calling the element trailer or the elemental trailer. Um, so tell us a little bit about this one. So I mean, just just looking at the at the drawing there, it, it looks like you guys basically took the you know took the the regular utility trailer architecture, but you've you've done it with a fully welded frame, a um, little bit little bit beefier all all, all the way around, and just bringing a little bit more more attention to detail on uh, on that is that is that kind of what we're looking at there yeah so we, we got a lot of feedback people who like the concept but they don't want to fork out that sort of cash for a big one so we looked at well how can we reduce the cost without losing the reliability so we thought about so when you get an import trailer what are the two things that fail number one is the tires and the bearings they can only go 40 miles an hour and number two is the frames rattle apart because they're all bolted together um, so we said, all right, we'll fix those two. So it's a fully welded frame, same tubing as the regular trailers are, and it's got the same bearings, tires, and wheels as our big boy trailers. We just put the, the little light leaf springs on there. It's a thousand pound leaf spring. So you, you have you know, about an 800 pound load. Um, and everything else is the same. Yeah. And when do you guys think you're going to be, be delivering the fir first ones of those? Uh, We'll see. So we're, we should be able to complete a prototype in you know, another month or two here, and we'll see what the orders do. And we build everything to order. Um, there's nothing sitting on the shelf. So if we get an order for one, uh, we'll build one. So what's what's your turnaround time for for these? Right years? now, our turnaround time is about four to five weeks. Um, that's because we we have quite a backlog of orders that we're we're working through. We're Good for you, man. Yeah. Down. Hoping to cut that down. Um, you know, spring hit and everyone remembered that they need a trailer. So. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're sifting through that, so. So, uh, we got somebody that wants to know what the bolt pattern of the wheels is, and I, I should add that, that these these wheels are also a bit of an upgrade. But these are these are aluminum trailer wheels. Um, they're incredibly light, very well balanced. Um, but it's it's just a standard trailer wheel pattern, which is like a like a Ford pattern, five, I think. Yeah. Yeah, five by four and a half. Yeah, so it, worst comes to worst, you can you can walk into a to a a, a trailer store, you know, a, a a boat store somewhere, and, and find find a, a, a spare for it. Should should you get you know you you get down to that, you, you know, they didn't you didn't use anything, uh, you know, really out of the, out of the ordinary there for um for some of those specs. So. Uh, I got a couple other good questions to get to. Let me take a quick break. Jonathan, I'm going to put you on hold for one second sure. while we pay a couple of bills here. We will be back in just a minute. I'm going to take my headphones off and I am going to tell you guys about the folks that make this show possible. You know who I'm talking about, folks, talking about our friends from CRC Industries. Um, while we were putting this baby together, anything that we thought could squeak or touch or or possibly um, have a metal to metal connection we used uh, some of our CRC dielectric grease uh, in, in our in our um, trailer tongue there we used a little bit of white lithium grease in various spots we used some power lube in various spots um, look I don't have to give you the hard pitch on CRC everybody's got a can of brake clean somewhere in their garage I know that that's because it's good stuff but did you know, and if you watch this show, you, you do, when you buy that CRC stuff, baby, you are not only getting a great product, you're getting a product from a company that supports the world we live in, that world of amateur and professional motorsports. Um, so when you're buying the CRC stuff, you're doing us a favor too. And it, look, if you can't buy any, send them a nice note. Like post something on their social media or go to their send them an email let them know that you appreciate that they are giving back to the community and that that that's a, a big deal for us it's a big deal for them they they pay attention to that stuff 
Also, we tell you about our friends from AutoBooks Aerobooks. You can check them out at autobooks-aerobooks.com. We got a cool book. We'll throw a link up to tonight about vintage travel trailers. Did you know that uh, our friends, who's also us at Classic Motorsports Magazine, are actually in the process of restoring a vintage travel trailer. In fact, um, Tim and Margie uh, Sutter just got back from a big conference last week where they were learning how to do different stuff on it. It was actually uh, some folks who met from a vintage trailer magazine. And you're actually gonna be seeing some of our restoration of that vintage trailer in, um, in Classic Motorsports coming up sometime this year. Also, wanna direct you to the, uh, the Grassroots Motorsports Deal of the Month. If you go to grassrootsmotorsports, dot com slash deal. Uh, what are we doing this month? Oh, uh, we are doing one year subscription for $25 with a free long sleeve t-shirt. So if you need a long sleeve t-shirt for doing track days, for um, just if you like a long, long sleeve t-shirt, nice all cotton long sleeve t-shirt, 25 bucks with a one year subscription. Good for a new subscription or a renewal subscription. We would appreciate you doing that. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, one more thing we were supposed to do tonight um, that uh, was a product that um, we wanted to show to you guys. Uh, see if we can get the copy here. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. JG Pastor Jack here from Grassroots Motorsports Live. Now I'd like to take you into the bathroom and show you something really, really special. No, that's awful. Um, no, okay. How's this? Uh, hey folks, JG Pastor Jack here from Grassroots Motorsports Live. If you're like me, you're a dirty, dirty boy who needs to get clean. No, no, you know what? Let's just do it, do it this way. Folks, uh, this is a can of Summit Mechanics Hand Cleaner. Uh, look, I've been a fan of Summit for a long time. Always order parts from there. I did not know they have a, a very, very well-stocked um, shop accessories uh, division. And this stuff, 25 bucks for a wall mountable, full uh, two and a half uh, liter hand cleaner. It's environmentally safe. It's, it's like, it's walnut shells. It isn't like harsh chemicals. It's good stuff. If you, if you need some hand cleaner, go to Summit. If you're ordering stuff from Summit anyway, and I know you are, get some of that. Um, let's try another piece of crap. Oh. Uh, hey folks, JG Pastor Jack here from Grassroots Motorsports Live. Have your hands been somewhere they probably shouldn't have been? No, no, I don't like that one either. All right, uh, look, we got to pay bills here too. Yeah, Andrew says Summit's got everything. And they do, man. I did not even know they had such a, uh, a well-stocked um, selection of shops. They have tools. They have, they have, all, like, they have all kinds of, of stuff for your shop, not just high-performance parts. And I was... I was remiss in knowing some of that, and I feel bad, and that stuff's really, really awesome. All right, back to our friend Jonathan here. Um, Jonathan, I want to show everybody another little clip here, and this is going to be the, uh, the rough road testing that you guys, you guys did with the trailer, and talk a little bit about, let me get this queued up here. So, talk a little bit about, um, as you guys were, were going through the development phases, I mean, we're, we're looking at a, a shot of this trailer on, on the road, what, what appears to be a, a, a fairly rough road, and it's just completely soaking up everything that, that, that the, you know, the road has to, has, has to throw at it. So, yeah, talk a little bit about what, what kind of loads were you expecting, what kind of, of tuning did the suspension have to go through to, to be able to take the, you know, the, the, the kind of use that, that you were expecting people to, to actually use it for? Yeah, um, right out of the box it performed exactly as we wanted it to. The only issues we had were with um, longevity. And since we didn't want to run around driving our cars for the rough roads for hours and hours and hours, and hours um, we built two machines in the shop. Um, one is this drop test that repeatedly picks up the trailer and slams it into the ground. And then we have a vibration simulator where we, we take the whole suspension and you know move it up and down at an excessive rate for, for days on end until something eventually fails. And when it fails, we you know, strengthen that number and then move on until the next item fails. And we'll probably just keep doing that indefinitely. Um, 
can never be too strong. Uh, so, so had, have you, since, since you, you delivered this one to us, have you guys actually actually found any anything? And, and what, I, I'm just, just having the experience that I have with this thing so far, I'm thinking that whatever is gonna break on this thing, you know, I will have long lost a, you know, a, a fender on, on the car before something fall, falls off of this thing, if, it, if, it's, if, it, if it's coming from, from rough roads, because everything on this thing is just really, really overbuilt. Have you, have you found any areas that you're still developing a little bit or you're, you're maybe yeah. developing for an, another version? Let's put it this way. If you break yours, there'll be a really good story that goes with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we want to make sure that you can do anything with, with this thing and just have full confidence that it can't break. So, uh, you know, our drop test machine is picking up the entire load of the fully full trailer and the cargo, you know, by the tongue and dropping onto the ground. So we're, we're making our tongues now to be able to stand all of that load, even though it's physically impossible to do that. There's no oh, reason wow. not to. Um, so uh, the, the initial issues we had were the, the getting the fenders to stay attached. Um, you know, they're, they're unsuspended weight. So, but we want that for the look of that sleek fender over there. So we beefed up the uh, fender brackets some more. Yours has the beefed fender brackets on it. Okay. Um, and then obviously when we, we realized that people wanted to carry ex extra fuel, extra parts, you know, um, like what we built for Danny, we doubled up the shocks just to ensure you can't bottom it out no matter how much you load onto the thing. Yeah, and so even even, even this side. one, like if we, well, we're lifting the, the tongue off the ground, but here, let me step on the front here. You know, we, we've got a ton of travel left on this thing. You know, mm -hmm. even even putting a couple hundred more, more more pounds on it so what what do you think is like the the absolute carrying capacity of 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 this trailer here we rate the one you got there at 450 pounds cargo weight um, and we rate the 335 at 650 pounds of weight so that's oh, wow. load not including the weight of the frame so uh oh uh the Dinesh wants a uh, video of the drop testing. We actually have uh, a, a link to, to, to a video of, of the drop testing we'll throw up in the, in, in the chat there because it's, it's, it's pretty fascinating. And um, so, so you, you guys basically built all of that test equipment too, right? Yeah, we live up here in the, the beautiful frozen north. <laughs> um, so, so when October not, hit... Nothing like, to do yeah, all winter but build keep, robots, yeah. Yeah, we got to keep testing. So we'll, we'll just build machines indoors to virtually test them all winter long until the, until the snow goes away. Cool. So what's, what's next? Um, you know, we, we've used this thing a little bit now. I've had a bunch of different utility trailers that I've kind of set up a little bit differently each time. And I've, I've, I've you know, put stuff on them that maybe didn't belong on them. But what, you guys have enough of them out there in the wild now where you're starting to get Pretty good feedback from users, I would think. What are people asking for, and what do you guys have in development? What we want to try and improve now, we're, we're pretty much settled on the transportation side of it. We want to make that day at the track even more enjoyable. So we want to convert this trailer. When it gets to there, it doesn't just become a useless piece of metal sitting next to your car. It converts into your race hub, your your command center. So we want, we're going to start working on accessories that will fold out of it. We want table space. We want shade. Um, and it's yeah, all going to be easy yeah. and convenient to use. Let me throw up, uh, you, you just sent me this today. This is, um, this is the umbrella mount, which, which I love because, yeah. you know, down, down here in the south, I mean, it's, it's hot already, man. You know, it's, it was mm -hmm. in the 80s at Fort Myers last week. Um, and it's, it's only, only going get, to get worse from there. I love the idea of... Um, of having some workspace that, that, that folds out as well. I, you know, I, 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 that's exciting. You guys are, are talking about, about table stuff too. Uh, we also have, this is cool. This is a, a concept for a version that carries a go-kart, um, which I, it sounds like you guys have had some, some interest from the cart community as, mm -hmm. as well. And then, you know, just kind of following along with some of your social media and, some of the comments on you know my social media when, when, when I post something, we, we got people that want to sleep in these things now. They want pop up canopies on top of them so they can just they can just you know throw a throw a tent on top of them. Um, but you, you guys, I, you know, you're one of the things we really dig about what you're doing up there is you're amenable to all that stuff. I mean, you're a low volume manufacturer, so you can switch gears like that. I mean, if you if you heard any any wacky ideas, it just just might make it into production at this point. 
the, the, the sleeping on top of it was the newest one. That one was <laughs> that one. That one might go somewhere. Yeah, but we're we're trying to think ahead. So we've the grid especially is such a modular frame, and that tubing means that you can buy a trailer today, and when we come out with a new accessory six months from now, it'll bolt up. Um, so yeah, the the shade is the next big one we're going to tackle. Everyone wants shade in an event, but the pain and suffering of unfolding a tent is just too much to bear after a hot day. So we found those, you know, patio umbrellas go up in five seconds. They don't weigh anything. So we'll we'll create a receiver on the back of the frame and a place to store it, and then you have shade when you want it. So, and, and we actually had somebody ask uh, about a bike rack too. And and yes. I've I've been asking for a bike rack, man. You got to do got to do a yes. bike rack for us at some point. What are your bike racks? Coming. We have two ideas. We want to do two different ones. We want to do um, a folding bicycle that comes with a mount. Um, for a, you know a little lower profile, and then we'll come up with something just to carry whatever bike you've already got. I'll uh, probably hang it off the back. Cool, I, I like it. So, how about how about storage options? One thing one thing we had kind of talked about a little bit is you guys were exploring some other other options for sort of um, you know storage that that kind of fills fills all these spaces here, and um, maybe some some different box options. What have you explored there that you think? Might might be experimented with it, you know, down the road a little bit. Yeah, what we're asking people, we're seeing what they want. Would they rather have one massive tub in the back that everything goes in, you know, almost like a it's half enclosed, half open, or do they want a bunch of little cubbies for for different components? Um, I personally like the little cubby route. That way, my lunch and my gas aren't in the same container. Yeah. Um, and and that way you can you can change it up depending on what your needs are. You know, if I'm going long distances, I'll fill that middle area with with more supplies. If I'm doing local events, I'll throw my my tent and lawn chairs in there. So yeah, and and I, I think security is an issue too. You know, we we talked about maybe doing a uh, doing doing a tire locking system that kind of mm -hmm. integrates it into the thing. I mean, if you're if you're going to an event where you're staying overnight in in hotels where you haven't you know. You, you're not able to take your trailer to a secure site. Um, you're just leaving it in skeevy hotel parking lot somewhere. Um, you know, uh, different security measures out here. You guys even talked about stuff like um, like security cameras and um, integrating some kind of power uh, into the thing, haven't you? Yeah. No, we definitely we want to put lights on the inside of the box. We want to have um, a power jack and batteries hidden on the trailer somewhere so you can recharge your drills, you can charge your phone, um, run lights underneath the canopy, um, that sort of thing. Um, and then definitely since we, we have the technology and we have power on the trailer, then we can do a wireless backup camera, wireless security camera. So when you go, you know, you park the car at a restaurant and go inside, you can pull out your phone and see what's going on outdoors. Keep an eye on it. Oh, wow, yeah. I actually never thought about the security camera aspect from, yeah, I was just thinking about it from while it's behind the car to kind of keep, make sure everything is tied down. But yeah, if you have mm -hmm. power on the trailer, you can, you can sit in your hotel room and watch all of, you know, w w watch whatever's going on in the parking lot of the hotel, whether you want to see it or not, maybe, um, right. and, and see what's going on out there. That's awesome. Well, we, we, we really dig the thing so far. I, um, I, I've long been a proponent of, of this, this type of, type of travel situation because so many of us drive our our track cars to the event and you you don't want to have the investment in a second vehicle to tow tow a car with but you have to get have to get the stuff to the track this is a fantastic way to do it uh you guys have also been kind enough to offer a discount for uh for our viewers tonight uh so so tell us a little bit about about that and how they how they redeem that if they're interested yeah i think you're going to splash up a code on the screen there yeah if you just uh let us know that you saw the show it was that code uh, we're offering 10 percent off all grid trailers this next month so if you place an order even if we don't get it delivered during this month uh, we'll give you 10 percent off the order awesome yeah and and uh we have we have have the code that we'll we'll throw up there so what what do you in six months, in in a year, what is the, what does this company look like? What is what does Solo Nationals look like in 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 the paddock this year? You know, what's your what's your outlook of this thing? I, 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 all the feedback I've heard from people that either have one on on order or have seen one in an event has been overwhelmingly positive. What do you what's what, what's success for you guys this year look like? 
Oh boy, I'm not sure if I thought it through that far. Um, <laughs> I'd love to get to nationals. That's, that's a long drive for me. Um, yeah, we just want to we just we want to make the track day experience more fun for everyone. We we track, you know, we we go to the the track, so we want it to be more fun for us. Um, you know, this started when I looked at what a set of tires for my Camaro cost and decided I didn't want to purchase a new set every year. Um, so we just, you know, we, we, we love the sport. We love motorsport. We love building things. I love building things that are elegant and, and look nice. Um, and I want to make it easier for myself and everyone else when we're, when we're playing. So. Yeah. And, and I, I gotta say like, like you guys, the, the design that went into this thing, as I was putting it together, um, the, you know, the actual eye for design that went into this thing is is really, really elegant, both from, from a, a functionality standpoint and a look standpoint. And you just kind of kind of walk around it and see how, how some of the different angles match up from corner to corner. And um, the, the, you know, the, the general architecture of the thing is is really, really slick. And then you, you kind of see see more um, how it's put together from a, from a functional perspective. And everything's packaged really well. The actual assembly of the thing was, was really, really easy. Um, Danny Kao has now put together two of the things, and I think he was telling us he he did uh, the one he did one last night with a, with a friend in like three hours or something. Um, so so the actual um, you know, the actual assembly on them is is fantastically easy. Um, oh, actually, got a, got a question um, about different materials. Any yeah. any yeah any uh, thought of doing aluminum or um, you know you know titanium for you guys would be. <laughs> because you're you're putting so much effort into everything else, why not titanium at that point? Yeah, we thought we thought about chromoly. Even. Yeah. Um, no, the aluminum at this point, no. And the reason is we don't think we could make it weigh any less, and it would cost more. Okay. So once we drop the solid axle on the leaf springs, that's most of the weight of a small trailer. So dry, the trailer you're standing next to weighs just a skosh over 200 pounds. You can't get a whole lot lighter than that. Um, yeah. Fifty of that is the wheels and tires, and the. Uh, the steel is just stronger. We'd have to reinforce an aluminum design a lot more, so it, it would take up more space. So at this point, we're going to stick with the steel. But we, at some point, we do want to do, you know, a bare steel one that we just clear coat for for someone who's got a rat rod. <laughs> That's where we want to build a rat rod trailer. Oh wow! Yeah, that would be cool. Um, yeah, D Danny says uh, did um, did one last night in uh, two hours and fifteen minutes. Which is which is crazy. I mean, it took it, it took me a day, but I was I was taking pictures and you know watching uh, Hunt for Red October on the on the big screen over here and, and doing a bunch of stuff. So um, Jonathan, man, hey, uh, I, we are we are fans of businesses like like yours. You know, we uh, Grassroots Motorsports, our whole company. We're a family business. We we kind of we kind of have have come into this market from just this very independent pers perspective. And we see folks doing stuff like this, like seeing a problem and just solving it by being smart and creative. It, it, we really, really dig it, man. I, I can't, can't tell you enough how, how impressed we are, not only with, with the, the product, but with the whole process. You guys have been fantastic on the back end, you know, just listening to all my dumb ideas that I, I, I come up with for stuff to put on this thing. And um, so yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a, that's just a, a great approach. We're we're honored to have you in the community, man. Well, thank you very much. It's very high praise. So, uh, <laughs> Danny wants to know red Loctite or blue Loctite. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, one of the things that that I, I was particularly impressed with, you know, uh, even though Danny's making fun of it now with the Loctite thing, is the instructions that you guys wrote for this thing. Were, uh, were were really really thorough. I mean, d down to down to the nut and bolt. You know, there were there were there were, were really um, no questions at all as far as the thing thing going together. What? Uh, tell us a little bit about the delivery process, actually. So, uh, the the way the way that ours showed up, uh, there was you know a little bit of assembly required, but but is that is what we got fairly fairly typical? Can you guys deliver a, a completed trailer if, if somebody wants yeah. it? So we've got three options. If you're close enough, you can come and pick it up. Um, that's definitely the cheapest option. Um, our standard way to ship it is in three boxes um, because the shipping cost for it, it to ship it a fully assembled one is very high. Now we can definitely do it if that's what you need, but 
it saves you a couple hundred bucks in shipping to get it yeah. in pieces parts. So the frame is in one box, all packaged up. All the hardware, tires, straps, fenders are all inside of that black tub. Yeah. And then the wheel to the third package. Yeah, and, and I was actually here. Let, let, let's show everybody. Um, we have a little time lapse of, of, of me actually putting the thing together here. And it kind of gives you a um, little bit of perspective as to, as to what's involved, but also like just, just how well laid out the thing is. So let me find it here. Okay, so here's me unpacking everything, and I got I got probably I I got four hundred dollars worth of worth of free bubble wrap from you guys. If if, <laughs> if if nothing else, I mean the, the the stuff was just incredibly well well packaged and and well organized, and uh, also very impressive. Is now we're we're putting the suspension on, and it, it looks like somebody gave crystal meth to a hobbit. Is is what this looks like, but. The, I was I was really impressed that you guys actually did uh, did the assembly Lego style, where you you numbered each bag and and each step. So you basically you just have to grab bag six, then grab bag seven, and then grab bag eight, and you're you're putting a trailer together. How much how much time went into that the actual um, process of, of assembly there? Uh, not not as much as you think. It's actually a check for us because we packaged it all in, in the reverse order that you took it out, and that way we don't forget anything. And, and we're all big fans of Lego, so the process <laughs> is easy to come by. Yeah, so you basically just just uh, just borrow borrow. The, if, if you got to borrow from somebody, borrow borrow from the best. Um, oh yeah. So, guys, uh, this is awesome. Let me uh, see if we yeah. Uh, Mark Krivostava, uh, who just uh, put his together last night. Um, the number, numbered and labeled hardware bags were, were super helpful, and and they are. I mean, this is this is something that just somebody using. Look, anybody who's changing their tires at an event has the skill to put this together. So don't be afraid of of any any piece on this. The instructions are fantastic, and um, the the whole process is incredibly seamless. Um, all right, Jonathan, thanks, man. We we really appreciate it. Uh, we, we we can't wait. Go to our next event, and um, it was he. Jonathan emailed me this weekend as we were driving. And I was posting stuff on social media, and he said uh, it's basically like watching Apollo 13 as as Danny and I were getting closer and closer to to um, Fort Myers with you know our our, our first uh, first copies of, of these trailers on on the road. So I'm glad uh, I'm I'm glad we got there. I'm I'm, I'm glad we, uh, we we did you proud there, man. Thank you. So, all right. Thanks, Jonathan. We appreciate it. We're going to let you go, and um, we will stay in touch. And um, thank you so much for offering our uh, our viewers some discounts. And wish you the best of luck, man. I hope I hope hope to actually catch up with you guys at some events this year. So, um, have a great night, brother. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right, gang. Awesome. Yeah, Danny says a flawless toe. So um, yeah, there, there, there's the discount code for the uh, for for the grid. The, like I said, this one as it sits with some of the options, about two grand. But go through and add up your receipts from your last your last discount trailer from 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 your last you know um, tractor supply trailer or, or something, and 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 tell me that you didn't spend nearly that much making it reliable. And pu putting it together, but I, I have spent so much time at the side of of the highway, trying to get my trailer back on the road. That that the the initial cost of one of these, completely justifiable for me. So I have I have no questions at all um, about about any of that, folks. Before we let you go, yeah, and thanks to all the folks that are uh, that are watching tonight and throwing us the likes, throwing us the shares. We appreciate it. Before we let you go, let me tell you about our friends at CRC Industries. Uh, CRC Industries, you can check them out at crcindustries.com. You can also check them out at any major retailer. You can go to uh, any auto parts store, Napa, O'Reilly, Advanced Discount Auto Parts, and they're going to have that CRC stuff on the shelf. It's fantastic. Everybody, we're down to our last two cans of brake clean, um, and I am, I'm guarding them with my life because um, this stuff goes really, really fast around here. 
But I have it on good authority that we've got a solution for that coming that I think you'll be excited to hear about. We get a new product that they are going to be releasing soon that is going to solve our brake clean problems for a long, long time. We'll be telling you about that in the next couple weeks. In the meantime, go to the store, buy yourself some CRC stuff. If you can't do that, send them a nice note. Throw, throw up a picture uh, on, on their social media of you using a CRC product, and you never know what might happen. Uh, maybe, maybe you become internet famous, and uh, you, you never have to worry about buying CRC stuff again, because they just send it to you. Maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. I, I can't guarantee that, but it's a nice thing to do. The other thing you're doing is you're not only getting a great product, you know you're getting a great product. You're supporting this world that we live in. They support shows like this. They support great race teams, like our friend James Clay at Bimmer World. They support all kinds of race series in amateur and professional motorsports. So when you're buying this stuff, you're giving a little bit back to the community, and we really appreciate it. Also, check out our friends at AutoBooks Aerobooks. You can check them out at autobooks-aerobooks.com. If you're out in the Burbank area, do not miss going by that store. It is the one of the coolest places you will ever set foot in. There are live events going on there every week, every Saturday. They've got authors in the store signing books. They've got cruise-ins going on out there. It's a really, really cool place to hang out. It's not only a great bookstore, a great video store, it is a, a hub of the automotive scene in Southern California. If you can't make it out there, hit their website, baby, autobooks-aerobooks.com. Anything you want to read about, whether it's cars or airplanes or boats or trains or blimps or hot air balloons, they've got books on it and they are fantastic. Everything from uh, shop manuals like this old VW Rabbit manual to uh, what, the history of the Bahamas Speed Weeks and uh, gasser drag cars and uh, dude, it's stuff. I, I couldn't even send her and make stuff up and, and them not, not have books about it. So check them out at autobooks-aerobooks.com. <laughs> yeah, Danny, Danny says um, uh, he works on heavy equipment and he, and he uses cases of CRC stuff every week. It's great. And um, my mom wants to know, does CRC make a glass cleaner? Yeah, you stole my last can of it, mom. So um, we'll be getting more of that soon, and I will hide most of it, but I'm sure you will steal the rest. Uh, all right, folks, that is it for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, as always, to Chris behind the camera. Thanks to David, who's been monitoring social media. Thanks to the gang from Leroy Engineering for making this. Somebody needed to do this. Somebody needed to, to design and build a bespoke track trailer. And these guys knocked it out of the park with these things. They, I, I, trust me, you will never regret a dime you, you spend on these things. They are fantastic. It, it was completely seamless towing it behind the, the Corvette last weekend. Just a fantastic experience all the way around. Um, so I, I, I cannot sing the praises of, 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 of these guys enough because... Um, you know, I am, like I said, impressed with not only the product, but, but the process behind it. And they're cool guys doing a cool thing, and I'm a sucker for that. I'm also a sucker for you nice people out there. And thank you very much for watching. Everybody just scoffed at that one. But no, it's true. Uh, folks, we'll see you again next Wednesday with another great show. I know we got, uh, what do we got coming up? We got, we're rebuilding Corvette seats in the next couple weeks. Uh, we're, we're actually doing a lot of Corvette stuff in the next few weeks because we have a lot of stuff coming up for that car. Um, might be coming to you live from the Dixie Tour next weekend. Trying to put together a, a special little, um, little pro project for that. Um, so all kinds of, uh, of cool stuff going on. In the meantime, check us out at grassrootsmotorsports.com. You can go to grassrootsmotorsports.com slash deal and get our deal of the month, which is a $25 subscription and long sleeve t-shirt, good for a new or renewal subscription. And you can always go to grassrootsmotorsports.com and see all kinds of great stuff from the magazine, stuff that we didn't have room for in the magazine. You can go to our forum, which is one of the best forums anywhere on the internet for car stuff. And you can just hang out and look at pretty pictures all day, and we definitely appreciate it. Folks, that is it for tonight. Um, so Danny wants to know, have I ever heard of the uh, bleeding door on the 76 Corvette and how to fix it? No. Oh, 70. 
So, so, so bleeding, is that like, like uh, is your Corvette haunted? What did it, is that what's going on? <laughs> so, no, I don't know. Um, I am, uh, I am not a C, one day I will be a C3 guy. One day I will be, I'll be cool enough to be a C3 guy and I will be able to answer all your C3, C3 questions. Um, in the meantime, uh, check out somebody like uh, Mid-America Motor Works um, who, has, who has stuff and a great knowledge base on all seven generations of Corvettes now. Um, and I will, I will look into that uh, bleeding door thing and I will see if I can get some information for you by next week. Folks, that's it. Thanks for joining us. I hope you are not snowed in wherever you are. It is beautiful here in Florida. Uh, sorry, but um, hopefully where, wherever you are, you are having a great time. We'll see you again next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Grassroots Motorsports Facebook and YouTube channels. Good night, everybody.